What a delight. Thank you so much, David, for coming and leading us in worship and sharing your heart. And, uh, we do wish God's blessing on, on your ministry. Uh, when a guy has his name tied together with the word ministries, it sounds really important, David. And it is. And we're delighted that you've come that far and you're serving the Lord. Uh, David Bracken Ministries has a website that I referred to in the bulletin that you can follow along, but you can learn so much more. David will be at the a little table he has with some CDs and stuff like that. Um, and we just, now we know you and we know your heart for the Lord and it's delightful that we'll be able to share together. We've been talking about evangelism and I introduced this topic right after Easter and that was a long time ago and we've been talking about it every Sunday and I called it e-church and I called it we talked about the E-word being evangelism, not electronic, and other things like that. But often I've started off, almost every time, uh, talking about it being a tough subject and that there's lots of confusion. So, and I haven't really said too much about that. I just say it and I'm hoping that somebody's confused so that they listen better and get unconfused, right? I found a video that I want to share with you this morning. It's called The Skinny on Evangelism. Can we do that? Evangelism is not for the weak, all right? I should know, I wrote a whole book about it. Self-published. Most Christians, they are just good for bake sales and potluck dinners. But I'm telling you this right now, it takes a lot of moxie to grab a non-believer by the shirt collar and throw him in the front doors of a church and say, hey, try living out your heathen life in front of a holy God that way. It is like holy water on a vampire. That's divine intervention, my friend. Repent for the kingdom of the Lord is nigh. Come to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, sir, it sounds like you're really passionate about Jesus. I am. Um, and you should also be okay. passionate about the Lord. Sir, if there's... You need to get sanctified or chicken fried. Can we... You need to get with the Lord or drive a fork. Get right or get left. I share my faith. Okay, that's a lie. People don't even know I'm a Christian. I want to. Again, another lie. I hardly shower, much less have the will to do anything else. Mm, okay. Now, if there was pizza and ice cream every time there was faith sharing, I'd do it. That's a lie. I'm lactose intolerant. Again, another lie. I'm just too cheap to buy dairy. Bottom line, sharing my faith makes me sweaty. A tip number 95, um, use big church words like transubstantiation. Heathens get confused easily, and the more confused they are, the more shamed they are. The more shamed they are, the more apt they are to make a decision for Jesus Christ. I believe it's a responsibility, no. The privilege, no. The glorious privilege of every believer to share their faith with others. That's why I share my faith with everyone I come in contact with. Everyone, really? <laughs> yeah, everyone. How do you do that? Uh, Check out my shirt. Can't read it? Try this glove. Not working for you? How about this bracelet? No comprendo? Vistazo a estos. <laughs> Driving behind me? Read my bumper sticker. It says, it's okay if you follow close. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> oh, you're my waiter or waitress? I got a tip for you. Surprise! It's the gospel. I mean, what do you want? Money or eternity? <laughs> I also use these tracks. <laughs> so, what about talking to people about your I, I don't really like people, but I love Jesus. <laughs> Scripture man? Hello, my name is George. And I'm Jorge, and together we're George and Jorge. Right, right. Uh, what we like to do is to take secular songs and reprogram them. Yes, the purpose is for evangelism. We like to take songs to the unbelieving world and make it believable. Right, right. Let us give you a sample right now. Hey, lost sinner. I just have to ask you, what makes you tick? What is it? You're heading to H-E double hockey sticks. Hey, lost sinner, why don't you just give it all up to Jesus? Tonight, pray for your soul today, for your soul today, just pray. 
I was a freshman in college the first time I invited someone to church. My best buddy called me. I was working at a grocery store. I was in the back cutting carrots, and my buddy called me. And I just said, hey, do you want to go to church with me tonight? And uh, I remember his words. He said, sure, I got nothing better to do. And I went to church with him. And, you know, I went there because they were serving pizza that night. Um, I don't remember what was said. I don't remember what was sung. During the services, I remember praying for him and just asking God to please reach out and touch his heart or do something because I knew he needed Jesus. And then um, God answered my prayers. That night changed my life, September 17th, 1987. Changed my life because I realized I needed a savior. That was close. Good thing those guys at the end toned it down a bit. Could have erased all the work I've done since Easter with those guys. We've been talking I said that it's confusing, and we have looked at several principles, and I told you I've been using a book, and I've been, it's a wonderful book, it was written quite a few years ago by a, a missionary in Europe who had a real tough time, it was eight years before he had a convert, but he wrote a, wrote a book later on, and it's called Evangelism for the Faint Hearted, and in that book there's the principles we've been looking at, and um, he outlines them, but this morning, I want to take just a few moments, and that's all we've got is a few moments, to look at, well, the words of Jesus. And I, I have been trying to, when I've been talking about evangelism, I hope that you haven't got the idea that uh, I'm trying to get it across to you in such a way that it, it'll sound easy. Because that's, if I do that, and then we read this scripture that I'm going to then um, we kind of missed the point. Jesus sent out his disciples to do the very task that he sent us out to do. I want to read from uh, Matthew chapter 10, when Jesus says to his disciples, he says, look, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. So be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. But beware. For you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and others, unbelievers, about me. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking. It will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. Those are the words of Jesus about this very subject. He had lots of other things to say about it too. And, and we've been looking at that. And we've been looking at some principles to help us. Because we started off by saying, in our hearts and minds, there are people that we want to receive the Lord. We don't want them to spend eternity in hell. And I've asked you each week, almost each week, to bring that person to mind and apply the things that we've been talking about and think about how God's gonna use you in that way. I, I'm gonna go over them really quickly. That you idea is that if you're gonna be sharing your faith, you need to share it with your friends. So therefore you need to be friendly and have friends and make sure that you do friend things with that person. And then you, you don't condemn them for what they are thinking or not thinking. You need to know their needs. You need to make them curious. You need to ask, get them to ask questions. You need to ask questions of them. We talked one week about not defending yourself and not trying to prove the Bible. And, but you, we are to show them, be attentive to how they're thinking about the world and things and show them how if they're not thinking about God, then they're, they're in error. And then don't try to give all the right answers. Well, today we've got three more uh, principles and I'm going to go over them quickly. The first one is, is, is one that... Um, Today's principles have to do with that I've brought up quite a few times, and every time I bring it up, I get kind of antsy about it, and I know that you do too. And it, it's this idea that a good way to do this is to get to the point in your spiritual conversation with these people that you can say, let's read the Bible together. 
Remember how uncomfortable you were the first time you heard me say that? And maybe you still are, but I hope you're warming up to it a little bit, because it really will work. But that's the first one. You ask, get ready for that time when you can do that. And then the last two are, are include the kind of evangelism that can happen, or the kind of sharing of your faith that can happen without with complete strangers. When you have the opportunity to be with somebody that you don't know very well, you might not go and see them again, but you have enough time to talk about things, and so you need to be ready at any time with your faith, living your faith and having words to go with it so that you can talk about it, and then lead them into, let them lead you into a conversation about God. Let them bring you to God into the conversation. So, so those are some of the principles. But I want to look at this, these verses that Jesus, uh, we looked in the, in the Gospel of Matthew, where he says in another version of the same verse, he says, stay alert. This is hazardous work that I'm signing you. The fishermen, the disciples were fishermen. They knew about hazards. And they had been walking around with Jesus for three years and visiting and watching Jesus do miracles and having people come and listen to Jesus and, and watching Jesus take on the Pharisees once in a while. It was good, exciting stuff, but not particularly hazardous. So Jesus tells them, it's, stay alert. This is hazardous work I'm assigning you. You're going to be like sheep running through a wolf pack. So don't call attention to yourselves. Be cunning as a snake and inoffensive as a dog. As a dove. Yeah, I, we hear the doves around our yard once in a while. And, uh, you, you'd like to say, shut up, dove, because it's poo, poo, you know. And, but you don't, because they're kind of, it's kind of cute. It's kind of nice. They're inoffensive. They're just a dove. But Jesus used those illustrations. Sheep, wolves, snakes. Doves. His disciples were outdoor people. They knew about these things. What he was saying was, if you're going to do this job, stay on your toes. It was probably a common saying that Jesus used, the shrewdest snakes and innocent as doves. But I don't need to explain that this morning. You get it, don't you? I can just move on. You don't be stupid. And, and, and snakes are, are very, they survive. Whether we like them or not, that's not the point. Whether you like doves or not, it's not the point either. Inoffensive, cunning. Be on your toes in this work of sharing your faith. When you're telling, about, telling and sharing your faith, you're telling about your faith experience. And as soon as you can tell your stories about catching a fish or, or whatever you do, and you're talking to somebody, they don't care. They smile and say, that's nice. But you bring God into it, you may push a few buttons and they want to tell you that they're never going to church again. They went to a church once and nobody said hi. And, or whatever the story they have. But everybody's got a, a negative story, almost everybody, about their experience or attempt at being right with God. And But you tell your story, you need to be on your toes because there will be a reaction. Sometimes it's skepticism, skepticism and, and they don't believe you or they think that you're nuts or they just dismiss you, write you off. But there's often rejection and danger as well. Many of the principles that I listed are examples of the need for careful preparation. Because the idea is if you're sharing your faith relationship with God, it's precious. And if you take the time and share something precious, you don't want somebody looking up, not even paying attention to you. You want the communication to click. So you want to be prepared and not let things get in the way. There needs to be a balance between winning a debate and being a doormat. That's kind of the balance between a snake and a dove. You need to have that balance because our message is about love and peace. Jesus' love and peace. But the consequences of not sharing our faith have huge ramifications, both now and for eternity. We know that. That's why we're talking about that. This is why no matter where you are in your walk with Jesus, you know that there's something you need to be doing. You need to be effective for him. You need to be obedient. And that includes telling 
your story about how Jesus has blessed you. So we need to find out ways to practice that balance. We need to know our faith. We need to know what some answers to some common religious defenses. Be ready to point out a loving God. And I think that that's the most important thing. We don't have to have the whole list and, the, and carry the, the, the check-off list in our back pocket and have it all ready to go all the time. But we do need to be able to point a conversation to a loving, caring God. One who takes care of us. Everybody wants to be taken care of. And God loves us. And we need to live that out. We need to practice the smile of innocence. I don't know if the doves dove smile when they go, ooh, but you think maybe they are. We need to practice that so that when we're attacked, we don't have to worry about that. Then Jesus goes on. He says, watch out for surprises. He says, this is in the, in the message version. He says, don't be naive. Some people will impugn your, your motives. That means they will doubt your motives. They will, others will smear your reputation just because you believe in me. Don't be upset when they haul you before civil authorities without knowing that they've done you and me a favor, given you a platform for preaching the kingdom news. When I talk about evangelism and, and sharing our faith, oftentimes we think, well, if this is just about me and people don't really care about me or I'm not that important. And so you get timid in that way too. But we need to be reminded again and again that we're talking about the kingdom of God news. What has happened to you and me in our relationship with God changes everything. And it will change everything for the person that you're sharing with. They become children of God. Members of the kingdom of God. Forever. Very important thing. Jesus warned his disciples that the job to go out into all the world would come. And so that's what he does. He says, and they did experience arrests and violence. Good thing Jesus had warned them because they got better at it and the book of Acts is full of the wonderful stories of how they endured those things. And it, he also added, by the way, even the toughest times, they can be turned into opportunities. And I think that's a, a real important thing for us to remember that when we feel down about our, our, the activities we have and or, or haven't used the opportunity to share our faith or, or somebody comes back at us and doesn't agree with us, Jesus says, that's okay. Turn that around. Use it as an opportunity to help change their lives. I reminded you a couple weeks ago and, and, uh, that no matter how much we are frightened of this task, or how much we just have, know that we've been church members or church goers for many, many years and nobody's ever pestered you about this as much as I have since Easter, that you can withstand this, it'll soon be over, I'm going on holidays next week, and you know, maybe we don't have to talk about evangelism for a long time. You know what? It's true. But I warned you a couple weeks ago that it's going to happen. It's going to happen in your life. As you draw closer to the Lord, as you experience new things with the Lord, he's going to give you somebody to tell it to. It's going to happen. Every one of you is going to have a story to tell. Whether you get to tell it or not, I don't know. But you're going to be sharing your faith. This is going to happen. You will begin to share your faith in new ways with your friend that you've been thinking about, or even with strangers. By daily growing in our relationship with God, which kind of isn't an option, that's our plan. That's what God wants for us, to spend time in his word, to, to grow stronger in him in our relationship. When we do that, we're preparing ourselves for the conversations. When you're reading the Bible and you, you, you begin before you begin, I hope that you always say, Lord, help me. Open my eyes to your word. Give me a verse today to hang on to. Give me a verse to go back. You might read a whole bunch of chapters, but you ask the Lord to go back, bring you back to, to a verse that's precious for you. And you'll read it a couple times. Some of you are, are, are 
good enough at this that it might even stick in your memory for quite a while, but take it just a few words. And as you are blessed, as you're built up with that verse that God has given you, it becomes part of you. In the next three or four hours, you're sitting with somebody and they say, well, how's your day? Anything happened good in your day? You say, well, actually, yeah. There was the verse that I read this morning. And you're doing it. It's not so tough. But you, as you grow in the Lord, these things are going to happen. He'll show you a verse to bring you wisdom, peace, and joy. And then that's what you share. Well, I'm going to finish off with the way Jesus finished off in verse 19. He says, when you're arrested, don't worry. He says, don't worry. Um, I met some ladies, a lady once that said, Pastor, that's just who I am. Uh, I worry all the time. And I can't change, that's just who I am. And she and I had had lots of conversations about different things, and so I felt pretty bold that morning, that time when I was talking to her, and said, you know, worry is a sin. Well, that's just who I am. And I thought, uh-oh, I've, I've pushed it too far. And I said, well, it, it's okay if we understand worrying as a sin, because then we know what to do. Because she had said, I can't do anything about it. That's just me. I guess it. And she was almost going to cry. And I thought, oh, dear, I pushed her. And then I said, no, when it, we label it as a sin, well, then we know what to do with it. First John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just and will forgive us our sin and cleanse us or make it so we don't do it so often. So when Jesus says, don't worry here in this verse, he's talking about the worry that comes up in our minds every time somebody says the word evangelism. Here he says, don't worry about what you'll say or how you'll say it. Do we believe the words of Jesus? that we don't have to worry about it. And then he tells it so clearly here. He says, the right words will be there. Now he's talking about the situation where they're going to be hauled up into court, and they did. They got hauled before the Sanhedrin and all that kind of stuff. There's a very real sense that we have enough negative emotion about sharing our faith and communicating spiritual things that it's almost, it doesn't matter whether it's an official judge or something, somebody, it those close friends, you've been a friend with them a long time, and if you bring up spiritual things, maybe they won't invite you to the next party, or, or the relative that just, you've been trying this for years, and if you make a mistake about trying to talk about spiritual things, they'll be on the phone to the other relatives and all that stuff. Jesus says, don't worry about that, because the words will be there. This is the best news that we can hear from Jesus. Don't worry. I'm going to give you things to say. Lots of things to think about, about sharing our faith. Mostly, it's just living our faith. When we live our faith, then we have something to share. And wonderful things happen. Talking about God because we talk with God. That's not complicated. Telling others about trusting in Jesus, why would we do that? Because we do trust in him. And he's worthy of our trust. That's what I want to leave with you this morning. Snakes and doves. Trusting Jesus. Letting him give you the confidence to share. I'm going to ask David to come and close the service here.